The blackest eyes. The devil's eyes. Hail to the king, baby. Boy! The plan is, kill the brain, and you kill the ghoul. Welcome to hell. I said, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains. <laughs> Welcome to prime time! Ha! <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to the podcast In the Back Seat. I am the most humble of hosts, Matthew A. Hutton IV. I've got with me here. I, the less less humble host, <laughs> uh, Wayne Alexander Merigold. I don't know. I, I did, did you say Merigold? I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking of, I'm thinking of like floristry or I was thinking of Lord of the Rings. Uh, it could have been Pippin uh, or Tarquin. Tarquin. <laughs> oh, I don't know what it is. I have this innate... <laughs> not hate hate's possibly not a strong enough word abhorration for immediately and going oh this is the nicest guy you've ever met in your entire life what's his name Tarquin <laughs> I'm not even joking here like whenever I'm in a, a situation which happens often well not so often obviously with the pandemic but when I'm in a social situation and I don't like anyone that I'm with and uh, you know I might be with a friend or like, let's say I'm at an event that I don't care about and I'm never going to see these people again. Someone who will come up to me and say, oh, hiya there, what's your name? I'll, without, I'm, without skipping a beat, I either go Jimmy Clem, don't know why, <laughs> or Tarquin Middleton, <laughs> depending, on, depending on how I want to play it. So sometimes throughout an entire event, I'll pretend to be an upper-class toff, or other, <laughs> other times I'll pretend to be a, Southern, <laughs> a South American film director called Jimmy Clem. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy Clam knocks Jimmy. There. You got a pretty mouth. Jimmy Clam approves. <laughs> it doesn't sound as good as like, Tarquin. Uh, it's it? like you have a pretty mouth. Tarquin Middleton approves. <laughs> or what would be better is maybe just start like uh, just say the exact same name that they say. My name's also <laughs> <laughs> Tarquin Montague the Third. <laughs> Esquire. I, I did go with Lord Worthington Smythe once, but I thought that that, <laughs> that just sounded too fake, do you know. <laughs> I know. The the look you get when you when you put Lord in front of anything. I, I remember the time at university I used to sign out all my emails with uh, with various different things. So it would be like uh, BA honors because I have a BA honors, um, PhD, which is a lie. <laughs> uh, MD. Pretty, pretty huge, dude. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Am I right, fellas? <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it would go off and like I would always sneak in KGB, and then at the end in brackets because Monty Python did it, I would put Mrs. But then I started having to take that out, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> uh, but I, I did it once to the, um, the the head of the department, and he just apart because he was he was one of those people who was always straight faced take no shit if you made any sort of joke you wouldn't react to it except maybe to break your fingers and i got this email back just saying what, what's that all about and i just wrote back oh it's a joke forgot to take it out again did it again and all i got back was one word lol <laughs> the most i've ever heard him laugh in my life <laughs> i thought oh, i was going to get kicked out of university <laughs> lol oh i'm trying to think of the what Trying to think of the worst one I've ever done, as far as like offend somebody. All ah, right, so this this is a social faux pas. This did not happen in this country. Uh, this happened elsewhere. Uh, two actually, I've got two. So one was I was working in the manager in a bar back home, and uh, was a couple of Welsh lads came in, and it turns out they were at some sort of like European or like a. British tournament for blind bowlers and when I say bowlers I don't mean like tin pin I mean like actual bowls no. looks like they're weighted on the one side you've got the jack and all that kind of stuff and obviously it's got a massive following uh, I, I hated it simply based on one thing I think it's because it, it, it made a film that I was recording on video plus <laughs> back in the day record late so it was like a two hour movie with a two hour tape it was on the BBC so it was perfect it was going to fit exactly in it, you know, maybe cut the credits out at the end. No, no, it ran over for an extra 45 minutes. So Jesus. I got an hour and 15 minutes and then lost the last 45. I was livid. I think it was like fucking Trevor's or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> I was livid. I was livid. It's got all oh, this film's absolutely I was too fast through all this. And it didn't twig. You're going, 
fuck. <laughs> uh, anyway, so fast forward to the end of this interaction. They got quite pissed, and then I got, all right, so take it to your turn, and it's tomorrow. No, no. We're going straight there now. And I'm going, the fucking, the mortal. And then they're going to go off and then play bowls for like four or five hours. <laughs> anyway, so they're all blind or, or quite badly visually impaired. <laughs> and I went, I'll see you later, lads. And I just went, oh my God, I wish it was dead. Oh. It, was just, it was just a turn of phrase. Yeah. And I just went, Fuck. And without missing a beat, and without missing a beat, well, I'm just replied with, you're lucky. <laughs> So I thought I was brilliant. I did. Uh, the other one was. No, go, on. go ahead, sorry. No, no. I don't know if I should say, but it, the other one was at work where I currently work now, and obviously I, I deal with some people who are ill, some people who are broad ill, as well. So I think you you might know what I'm on about more so. But somebody wanted what's known as, and I can say, a, a provisional replacement certificate for something. Mm -hmm. So apparently their their poor child was in intensive care, and I'm not making light of that at all. Like they're, they're in a lot of stress. This person did the whole thing, did it perfectly for them. And at the end of it, as you do, have a lovely day. I could hear her in the background going, you just said have a lovely day. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Should I call her back? No, it's, that'll it's make almost... it worse. Oh, no, what do I do? <laughs> well, what I meant was, what I meant is, have a nicer day as you put as you put. Yeah, I know. I felt so bad, but I mean, you know, hopefully everything worked out. The sentiment was lovely. Yeah. Uh, and yes, in the place in which we currently work, just just in case anybody is listening, it's Omni Consumer Pro. <laughs> <laughs> Send one dollar to Happy Dude, <laughs> courtesy of. <laughs> oh. No, I've um, done. Yeah, I'd, I'd like for us not to be unemployed. <laughs> yeah, no, I've, uh, I've done. There's loads of shit like that. Where I used to work in a sales place, and I sat next to this person who, she wasn't, she didn't think before she before she spoke. Like more than I do, I was on autopilot there, which is, you know, it's like a pleasantry, that's just what happens. With this person, somebody was late for work. She come in, she said, oh, I'm sorry I'm late. There was a jumper on the bridge. The person who sat next to me goes, what color was it? Without skipping a beat, I looked and went, you can't ask that in this day and age. Of course she meant jumper is in the apparel. <laughs> 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 Fucking idiot. <laughs> Why would that stop traffic? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a minute. <laughs> Somebody lost a shoe. <laughs> we gotta get to the bottom my, of this. My only, my, my only thoughts of it that would be somebody's like it's it, the jumper was wrapped around undeclared or abandoned luggage. It was beeping. Somebody had to send it. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> tick tick tick. Oh shit! The jumper's ticking. Oh. Uh, what was that? Oh, the, so my my other social part <laughs> faux pas. Then we'll get into our topic of the day. Okay. Um. <laughs> fucking the uh, the one I was talking about was um, I worked in a summer camp uh, and I've got as a, as a viewers or listeners viewers fucking hell I've got a face for radio <laughs> uh, podcasts um, so I've got stretched um, I've got flash tunnels in my earlobes so this lovely lady who her child I'd been looking after for the last eight weeks in upstate New York I think it's upstate Catskill Mountains possibly upstate New York anyway the lady's like quite well to do uh, and she was like oh yes so I noticed your um, your ears and I'm going is there any particular reason as to why I did that I was feeling a little bit mischievous <laughs> it was the end of camp these kids are going home I'm never going to have to see this lady ever again and uh, I says oh I actually did one of those like DNA tests and it turns out I'm a descendant of a uh, of an African tribe so I've decided in order to embrace my heritage by getting these done and the lady's like, oh, that's phenomenal. That's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> How did you find that? I went, I'm just going to stop you there. I was lying. I was having a joke. Aww. And then it's just, it's just got out of hand. And I'd like to just step away from the conversation immediately. She went, okay, <laughs> what a lovely chap. And then off I walk. At least you're honest. <laughs> uh, I was a little bit less honest <laughs> in something I'm about to say. <laughs> because... I, I'm a voice actor, uh, I've mentioned a few times, I've done a couple of professional things and I can do accents quite well, so the, what I used to do when I was single, <laughs> whenever I'd see someone, uh, I'd like, I'd try an accent, so sometimes I'd be Russian, sometimes I'd, I'd do so anything, and I thought, right, this time I'll be American, so I went up and I went, hey there, and this girl turned around and went, oh hi, I was like, oh shit, so I was there for about an hour and a half talking to this this woman, and I'm like, uh, she's like, so where are you from? I'm like, uh, Virginia. Me too. Which part? Oh, <laughs> south. <laughs> so I, I didn't really know anything about what I was saying. And we're hitting it off quite well. Then a boyfriend came, 
<laughs> like just turned up and was like what's this all about I looked at him looked at her and went fuck it see you later and walked away <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, no no shame at all um, I'm, I'm not fun to be oh. with on a night out <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Right, so <laughs> as our as our listeners will probably tell, I'm not from this this area. Not that this is a very regionalist type sort of uh, program that we're, we're kind of having fun with, as it appears. <laughs> um, I'm not from here. I'm from the north of Ireland, Northern Ireland, a little place called County Down. Anyway, I first started uni like fucking twelve years ago, thirteen, two thousand and six. Mm. I was there for a short period of time, but the best time ever which is why I can I came back and moved here again to live and work for the last so, so anyway so I was on a night out I was speaking to a female friend of mine there was no interest entirely platonic just just having a laugh with this friend she was quite small I think she was from Yorkshire somewhere um, anyway we, we were having a bit of a laugh and etc no no connection that way just just having fun and this big meathead this tall drink of water this this lager loud just starts walking up like he's carrying like two flat screen TVs underneath his arms or he's like walking like a, a fucking teddy bear um, where he can't move his neck independently of his body like a, an old Batman suit or something anyway like Bigfoot so <laughs> guy comes over starts chatting going uh, who's this then and I go oh it's like oh, my name's Wayne nice to meet you shake his hand and she's like oh, oh, alright you're from Northern Ireland are you and I went yeah yeah and then he immediately just fucking does a full 180 and then just fucks off. So maybe something terrible happened to him. Maybe he kidnapped Liam Neeson's daughter, and uh, that was that's what. You just get flashbacks. He hears helicopters like, no, we're in Northern Ireland. Oh, what's what's that? That sort of it's that really quite famous music. I think it's not the one from 28 Days Later, although that would be quite. Yeah. Was it? Oh, what's it called? Dark Emperor or something. I can't remember. I'll, I'll look it up whilst we're chatting. Could be right, but it's the, the one Valkyrie. for Twenty Eight Days Later. <laughs> it's just fucking. <laughs> Have you not seen the one where it's like a it's like a sheepdog and it's being confronted with either a slice of cake or a muffin? Oh, yeah. And the dog, it's the dog's just fucking terrified. And then somebody's managed to put in like war footage in the background. Do you want to spare war? Come on. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the dad? Oh, I never knew the. Uh, <laughs> what's this guy? What's, 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 what's the. What's the cop from. Um, it's not Fast Eddie, it's somebody else. Is it Eddie and Lou? Is it Lou the cop from The Simpsons? Yes. Yeah. And Eddie. Apparently he's. Uh, yeah, this is Lou and Eddie. Lou's obviously the one that gets used a lot more. Yeah. But Lou was was an emulation I think it's uh, Hank Azaria doing a, 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 an emulation of um, of Sylvester Stallone oh was he <laughs> Did you, have you ever seen somebody kind of broke the Simpsons for me a little bit and they they come mm-hmm. they, they showed if you look at Ralph and if you look at Eddie it looks as though that Chief Wiggum's wife <laughs> may have been a bit naughty <laughs> They're a bit similar. That's right. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's, there's loads of ones where there are reference to different people. Like um, Chief Wiggum, is he not meant to be like uh, W.C. Fields? Yeah, he's. Um, they even pointed out on one of the episodes, don't they, with the the plagiarism. And then uh, and well, Homer Simpson's basically Fred Flintstone. Yeah, <laughs> and then that comes from. Um, Oh, it's one of them, like Sergeant Belko, and there's a couple yeah. of other ones where like they're a pastiche of each oh, other. Oh, the, the worst one um, for that's Top Cat, who is essentially Sergeant Belko as a cat. Like it's exactly the yeah. same. I think it's voiced by the guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking. I'm mean, both of which oh, are great. Is... <laughs> oh. oh yeah, I really really enjoyed them. I remember getting like videos of those and like <laughs> loads of stuff by Hanna Barbera. Yeah. Which was like uh, mm-hmm. you got like wacky races. Oh, that was class. Did you ever see Catch the Pigeon? They did a, a spe- I fuck I fucking pigeon. <laughs> fucking, I know. Did you ever watch because the, they did a few spin-offs. <clears throat> and they did um mm-hmm. Catch the Pigeon, which was one of them. And then they did the um The Perils of Penelope Pit Stop. Oh yeah, yeah. And and that's got Paul Lind in it and I, I've referenced him quite a bit because he's he's the fav- my favourite voice to do. Because he's just great for <laughs> he's just, I'll get you Penelope Pit Stop, which is obviously like what Rogers uh, come from. <laughs> 
but he's he's the angriest ah oh, because he was he was very openly gay in a gay where uh, in a day where it was kind of illegal to be gay but he yeah. managed to get away with it just by by just being really angry <laughs> which <laughs> is great <laughs> like dude like oh it's not great that he wasn't oh, allowed to be gay mind you i think that that's awful and very yeah. repressive but it's 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 horrible that that, that was the case yeah. um but obviously i think people like him sort of be in the way that he was obviously then kind of hopefully to a certain extent sort of paved the way for other people to kind of do oh, absolutely and he, he, hey who, who knew that our, who knew that our chat would be informative <laughs> come to the podcast in the back seat you'll know about i don't know i'm not even going to go into it so you'll stuff. learn something from every episode whether you fucking want to or not <laughs> you sit and listen to what we have to say you've learned that your fat Ge- geordie host is a bit weird <laughs> So aside from offending people, what else are we here to do today? Yeah, well today's uh, today's a re-record because my my stubby fingers apparently must have done something, and we've we've lost the original audience <laughs> to a, a, to an episode that we did. And um, if you've listened, because I will order these um, in a way that it's still continuity based as well. The last type of show we've done, because uh, the one prior will be a review, was top five male actors in horror. So this one's going to be yes. the top five female actors in horror. Mm-hmm. Um, we will probably know most of each other's list as we've already recorded. This is the first time we've technically <laughs> rehearsed an episode. <laughs> Fucking DJ, I've, I think I've lived this before, aren't I? <laughs> but uh, I, I've decided to change some of them up because I am fickle. Uh, and it, it, these are legitimate likes because I I know you you mentioned in the last episode that you'll never hear <laughs> um, that you you, <laughs> you don't you you don't put them in order I I have because I'm judgmental um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's as judgmental as he is sexy now <laughs> <laughs> so I've changed mine up a little bit just to be a bit of a surprise to you and to be honest with you the the top five female actors in horror was a hard one. Because there's so much talent, like oh yeah, there is. And what what he means by talent, by the way, oh. is <laughs> <laughs> am I am I speaking another dirty dirty lingo language like in one of the earlier episodes that I didn't? What are you talking about? Is talent somebody who's a talented <laughs> but a person who's brought something to horror or has made an impact in you in some way, shape, or form? Yeah. Since you first started watching horror, rather than sort of as somebody might be saying, if we were talking about the top male actors in horror, we're going talent that caught Russell mind oh. fucking oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes me crinkle that it's like it, it reminds me of uh, Let the Right One In where we were talking about the sound effect with a sausage eating oh. sa- sa- yeah. sausages <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Clem's what, coming back what you eating I'm eating sausages <laughs> You want to eat my sausage? <laughs> no. <laughs> Jimmy Clem wants you to eat his sausage. <laughs> See, no. You want to eat this hole? <laughs> I don't know why the way he said sausage there, Jimmy Clem. He. Uh, it's me. Why am I <laughs> the third person? Reminds me of that Jimmy, episode. Jimmy Clem. <laughs> Jimmy Clem ain't happy. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Reminds me of that episode of The Simpsons where they, they go to Matt Groening's office and he's, he's taking a drink of Jack, Jack Daniels. Like, Get out of my office! <laughs> 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 what did you thought? <laughs> the, uh, I've got crippling OCD. <laughs> oh fucking Simpsons of class as well. <laughs> but, so who was who was so coming in at number five? Who was your number five? Yeah, well, uh, my number five is is a new one uh, that I didn't even mention uh, last episode at all. So even as a, a special mention. Last episode, which we pre-recorded again, that you'll never ever hear, I believe was Kathy Bates, but I've changed now to Olivia Hussey. Now he he ra- he raises in, uh, his eyebrows in surprise as to, and and this is where I'm going to learn something, boys and girls, <laughs> children of all ages, not children of all ages, because we've got that E <laughs> on our podcast, which means it's explicit as. <laughs> anyway, so it's imitatable, Olivia. <laughs> 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 so who Olivia Hussey did you say Ol- yeah Olivia Hussey uh, she is the lead actress in Black Christmas uh, the one with the black hair she's also in Psycho 4 actually does play Norma Bates in the flashbacks but she's also in oh, nice one. Uh, she's in It as well the original It with Tim Curry um, nice one she's I believe it's the main character's wife in It uh, so the, the mm-hmm. author I forget his name um, 
because I was watching Olivia Stephen Huss. King yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that famous guy whoever who the fuck that is uh, but yeah no Olivia she's just got if, if you've not you might not because I know you've not seen Black Christmas um, you've not seen any of the other cycles you mentioned as well this is off recording I've only seen the, the yeah. first one uh, part four is one of those hard watches because Anthony Perkins himself wanted to do it knowing he was he was going like so he wanted to yeah. as it were pass the mantle it's also incredibly hard to get hold of so I'm going to spoil it if that's okay I, I crack on yeah. and miss it I, yeah go for it well it, it, it's kind of an odd film because one two and three which I won't talk about too much um, are standard films They're very good mm-hmm. especially part three check out part three you'll love it Part four, mm. he's calling in a radio um, show because he's married. Mm-hmm. Norman mm-hmm. Bates is all intents and purposes cured, but he's having a bit mm-hmm. of an episode. So he's, he's talking to a, a radio psychologist, and he's talking Bruce. about how he, he he's thinking about killing his wife. All all the, the while, mm-hmm. his wife is working in a hospital and is pregnant. Like, right. and that's why he's having the episode because he's worried that he's passing on. The uh, the illness, as it were. Um, mm-hmm. So throughout the episode, because she's very heavily pregnant, he's going through his past. So it, there's flashbacks to young Norman actually killing his mother, and that's where Olivia Hussey comes into it. She's so good at the part. Now I like right. Fate Motel. The series is quite good, and the actress that got to play mm-hmm. Norma's phenomenal actress. I forget her name. She's in Godzilla. I think I, I could be wrong. I think it's Vera Farmiga. It is uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, From the uh, the Conjuring movies, and she's, yeah. she's done a load she, of other stuff. But I think she initially started off in The Departed with Martin Scorsese. Yeah. It's my first kind of memory. She's in um, Godzilla. As well, yeah, but if, which is awesome. Like, oh yeah, yeah. she's uh, she's the uh, the lady that's just. She could have been on this list. Off, just, to be fair, she's just really good. Yeah. <laughs> she's done. She's done a lot of really good movies. She's in Orphan. Have you seen Orphan? Oh God! Yes, yeah, she is. That that blindsided me because apparently that's based on a true event, or you know, as true as it can be. What? Yeah. I see. I never knew that. That that's that that's that has yeah. totally. It's creepy. That's, that's <laughs> skull fucked yeah, my but, brain hole. But she's, she's a great actress. Uh, so she did she did Norma Bates really fine in Bates Motel. Olivia mm-hmm. Hussey played the perfect. Because there was a lot of research gone into part four, which is odd because it was a straight to TV movie. Which, when you th- talk mm-hmm. about Psycho, doesn't you think how is that even possible? It's weird. Yeah. But um, mm-hmm. she plays the perfect schizophrenogenic mother, which is mm-hmm. how that sort of thing is induced on a very young child. Mm-hmm. So she's very right. loving, very overbearing, but also will snap. So at one point when she's on, uh, when they're he's very young attending the funeral of his real biological father she's huh? she's sort of hugging him and then for no explanation starts tickling him so he'll he'll laugh so she can scald him in front of people and it it's so awkward to watch and there's, there's this weird bit where they're having a bit of a wrestle young teenage norman's having a bit of a wrestle with his mum like and he gets a rager yeah he gets a rager does he oh, oh i was joking it's what he, i was joking he doesn't really it's what she says though just so she can have a, a massive go at him and get her current boyfriend to beat the shit out of him which is mm. one of the reasons why he then goes on to poison them both <laughs> as as you know explained in the first one but her performance please tell on me that is, please tell me <laughs> it was a slowly did he slowly poison them uh kind of actually yeah especially his mum like he, he really didn't like her well he did that was the point <laughs> I, um but what I, I quite like is that it, it's left to your imagination like is it incestuous the sort of love that he has or is it just more what she he doesn't even know he's so me- messed up because of so it's sort of like a really nice origin it's what you expect almost and it is yeah. it is an answer to a question nobody really asked but I, I, I give it a pass because it was done by Anthony Perkins and he really wanted to right. to pass the mantle because the end of the movie, mm. spoiler alert is he doesn't kill his wife he commits himself and his wife gives birth so he was in a, right. essence passing on the, the mantle in a very physical sense not to say that mm. just because he ha- he suffers from it's not even schizophrenia really which is what they call it in the first one, it's multiple personality disorder yeah. right. you, it's not hereditary technically to a degree apparently right. it is I'm not a, a brain psychiatrist 
<laughs> psychologist. Um, whoa, whoa, you're not. No. So that PhD you mentioned beforehand, <laughs> that's, that's fucking bullshit. I'm, I'm more KGB, uh, Mrs. In <laughs> but no, um, so it, if the Russian, if the Russians are listening, please assassinate this man <laughs> with an umbrella. <laughs> That'd be oh god, yeah, that's another thing. Um, but the, the main reason I picked <laughs> Olivia, Olivia Hussey, I don't want to go on too much about Psycho Four, though it is, it is brilliant. It's not well, like beautifully directed. It is very visibly a TV movie. Yeah. But it was a nice bow out. Andy Perkins knows he was going to die. There's beautiful casting in it. To get back to Olivia Hussey, she's also uh, the main reason I picked her was Black Christmas. And nice. It it. She's a bit like. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis who in as much as when you hear her voice when you hear her scream you know who it is without looking she's she's a yeah. great scream queen even before because that came out before Halloween as well mm-hmm. plus she's she's mm-hmm. English as well um, did did quite well in uh, in America as well and uh, even in Black Christmas she worked with somebody else who I was tempted to put on this list as well um, she played Lois Lane uh, Margot Kidder. Margot Kidder, yeah, uh, who I think we did mention on the the last record a little bit for Amityville and the like. Um, oh, she she uh, she Death on the Nile, hmm. uh, Romeo and Juliet. I think is that the Polanski one. Ah, oh, probably. Yeah, I've not. No, no, it's, uh, it's oh. uh, Franco Zeffrelli. Is that not the one? I think the Roman Polanski <laughs> one's the one where the the kids are of the age that Romeo and Juliet were, which is. Uh, hmm. A bit suspect. Uh, <laughs> it's right, like was it Last Tango in Paris or whatever it's called? Yeah. Uh, it's not one of the. Oh, yeah, that's. It's a no from even the director. <laughs> it's a, you know, <laughs> let's not and say we did. Yeah, <laughs> let, let, let's not even say we did. Uh, <laughs> but no, um, <laughs> that that's my number five. There's not much to talk about in terms of the the horror that I've seen her in. At least she's probably done more, uh, but I, I just think she's not talked about enough she's a really good actress she's mm-hmm. very talented the the end of black christmas i will talk about it a lot because i love that movie and i'll, I'll watch it on halloween and then at christmas as well so it's at least a twice twice a year sort of event um but I, i'd like to know your number five good sir i it's, it's not my number five i've not done them in a particular order i think i've kind of done them sort of I don't know, maybe I've tried to do them like in a chronological order. Mm. Not biologically chronological as in the order in which I watched them and I think more so sort of like older to kind of hear. So my first one I wanted to come in was uh, Elsa Lanchester. So Elsa Lanchester, as you know from the last time we recorded this, ah. um, played the bride. Aha! <laughs> That's him. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so Elsa Lanchester played uh, in Bride of Frankenstein. So this is based solely on on one film, she has done a bunch of other movies, etc. Um, but based on one film initially alone, because as far as I'm concerned, I think there's only one person who has play, played the bride from Bride of Frankenstein. Um, and the, the second one, directed by James Whale, he got given basically carte blanche to make another one because mm. the first one did so well. Like Frankenstein is fucking brilliant. James Whale, can you please come back and make a sequel? And there is kind of no sequel book that follows on so yeah. obviously he's decided yeah I'll, I'll do it but I get to do whatever I want with it um, but obviously he has Elsa Lanchester and in the opening sequence of Bride of Frankenstein Elsa Lanchester plays Mary Shelley Wollstonecraft so she introduces a story so it's almost like a framing device and then it immediately cuts into um, the movie where the Frankenstein's monster has fallen through the um, the windmill and then goes off in order to try and find his way whilst also being pursued by people with pitchforks and uh, and fire etc but Elsa Lanchester is absolutely phenomenal in that part and she's very I other people have played the bride as far as I'm aware I know Helena Bonham Carter played her in Mm -hmm. um, Kenneth Branagh's adaptation of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein Um, but I think Elsa Lanchester is is the bride yeah there's Uh, there's no and, and there's little little to no dialogue from um, the character of the bride but just this this sort of striking look which has then been emulated loads in different movies to a certain extent like um, it's done in Frank and Weenie yeah because Tim Burton's such a huge consummate fan of, of that old style old style universal horror the approach every animal that is in Frank and Weenie is like a pastiche or a homage or a 
uh, like a tip of the hat to uh, Universal Monsters. So it's like the invisible animal. You've got one that's like the mummy, one's the bride, one's Frankenstein's monster. Um, one of them's like the creature from the Black Lagoon, etc. Elsa Lanchester, for me, very striking, very just that one scene, you just see her emerging, which is wrapped up and everything else, absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Um, but she, she did a load more horror movies, um, aside from that one, but that that's all she required as far as I'm concerned. She could she could do that one song and fuck off, and she yeah. would have been still, she still would have been amazing for me. Um, she was in she was in Mary Poppins. Is she? As, yeah, as she the bride. In... <laughs> Call blimey, Mary yeah. Clean Poppins. It's the bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> Rips his face up. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, well, well, I've I've thought about it loads. Like Mary Poppins, she's basically a witch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's dark as fuck, really. Yeah. Oh, she. F- oh, yeah. Do as I say, children, I'll... or I'll use my magic. <laughs> <laughs> it or you'll it. disappear yeah. or you'll disappear into this bag or I'll beat you to death uh, with this fucking talking umbrella. With the bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> and then and he uh oh, he won't say a word, will you know? <laughs> oh, <I do. laughs> yeah, she pays Katie Nana uh in it, which I think is quite cool. Um <clears throat> but she I think she died the year I was born. Yeah, she oh. died in 84, 1986, born in Lewisham in London. Um but yeah, absolutely phenomenal based on that one yeah. performance. Um, just brilliant, absolutely phenomenal. If anybody hasn't watched it, I think it is widely available to watch it. I would even double bill Bride and then Bride of Frankenstein just oh, based on the fact that, that films cool. back then were so expensive to produce, um, etc. cetera. The, the, the films only lasted like an hour and 10 minutes. Yeah. Maybe sometimes like a little over an hour, yeah. so you could watch two of them, and it would still be shorter than some modern movies that sort of get done now. Yeah. Um, but absolutely phenomenal, and it's still. <laughs> I probably mentioned this beforehand. Bride of Frankenstein breaks my heart. Yeah. The, sw- the swinging brick where my fucking heart should be. <laughs> uh, breaks my heart with a little blind man thanking, uh, thanking God uh, for sending my friend. I <laughs> know. Ah, I cry every single time. Oh. Like a like a kid with a skinned knee. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever notice the? Um, I, I don't know if I'm reading too much into this, but did you ever notice the parallel? Have you seen all of the Halloween sequels? I, I think I have. Mm. So part four, at the end of it, Michael gets shot, falls down a shaft. That's the end of it, kind of. And then in part five, at the very beginning. He falls down the shaft, and you see that they actually uh, bombed it. They threw like dynamite down there, but he survives mm-hmm. and falls down. That mm-hmm. shot, the way the, the, that it's like formed, like the the angle and everything, is very much like the beginning of uh, Bride Frankenstein. How Frankenstein gets mm-hmm. out of the windmill. Yeah, I don't know if that's a parallel that I've only drawn, but it's something I think of every time I see it because I've seen both of them yeah. like, quite often. Um. Mm-hmm. So if if you agree, <laughs> please write to podcast uh, well at podcast in the back seat on the the Instagram yeah. page. If you don't, also write and go fuck yourself. No, um, <laughs> uh, that, that's just me. I was fine because you mentioned there that uh, the well she plays the bride, but also plays Mary mm-hmm. Shirley as well. Yeah, uh, which is really nice because as the writer Mary Shelley of Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. Authors and writers will draw from real life and will self-insert, so that in mm-hmm. itself was very fourth wall breaking and a nice nod to someone because you know, I've written and I've, I've been publishing things, so it's kind of like oh I do that, <laughs> like yeah, I quite like that because <laughs> it's, it's it's quite clever not to, not to kind of del- uh, dwell on it too much, but mm. the opening of Bride of Frankenstein actually mirrors a true story that happened. To I but I've probably mentioned it on another podcast. So I went to this um, what's it called lecture Mm -hmm. at a local university the posh not the poly from what I remember (laughs) Uh, so went to this this thing about Mary Shelley Wollstonecraft the lady behind Frankenstein's monster and it's based on a true story so the bit where she's talking and they're going to read like tell each other like ghost stories it's about Lord Byron James Polidori Mary Shelley Wollstonecraft and what's his name something Shelley oh Pete Peter Shelley, yeah, uh, yeah. Peter Shelley, yeah, and I think there was somebody else there, as far as I'm aware. But it's based on a true story where they went to this villa in Italy, 
where there was a load of like uh, ash in the clouds, uh, which basically made like the summer really, really dark. So it was the summer that wasn't the summer. Uh-huh. And they told each other ghost stories. So Lord Byron, James Polidori, who wrote Vampire, um, which is different from Bram Stoker's Dracula, uh, Peter Shelley, and obviously Mary, Mary Shelley Wollstonecraft, and. It's just brilliant as to how they've kind of incorporated that into the opening of um, Bride of Frankenstein. Yeah. It's really, really cool. But anyway, uh, to summarise, Elsa Lanchester. It's fucking brilliant. Two thumbs um, up from me. <laughs> yeah. No, she's awesome. If I had more, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm not... I'm, 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 as far as I'm aware, not inbred. <laughs> <laughs> I'll raise the thumb. That's Coming in, in number chest. four. <laughs> hey, yeah. Well, number four on... On the the episode that never was was Ingrid Pitt, but I'm, I might change that up. Brilliant actress mm. still though, so it's definitely worth a mention. Um, who I wanted to refresh my memory. Uh, who was Ingrid Pitt again? Yeah, she's the she's just the the Hammer icon that 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 never yes, really was. Yes, you did. I remember you mentioned yeah. the, the the last time round. Yeah, she's bright. No, she's um oh she's Count S. Dracula. The, the likes. She's just in lots. She's in the Wicker Man. She is essentially the female Christopher Lee, but as the world kind of is sometimes, isn't as well remembered. Um, yeah. Go on, though. Sorry. Yes, I think because you know, because I think the last time you mentioned that, said so she stands up very well opposite um, hmm. opposite Christopher Lee, who's a very sort of like not intentionally and not in a negative way, like a domineering force. Yeah. He's he's. He's fucking Dracula, yo. Yeah. <laughs> and then you've got to be like, how are you going to get somebody to kind of go next to that? And from what I remember, um, she stands up very, very well, and yeah. she stands kind of on her own, separate. What What I really um, like about her as well is that what you say there as well, she stands with them and does stand alone when she needs to. But what they yeah. do very well is they don't. Though he's really imposing, he is Dracula in my opinion. He's my my favorite Dracula. Is where I always go to. She mm-hmm. she doesn't one up him she's not just better than he is she's not also his underling they complement each other and that's yeah. the important it's so beautiful do you know what? i'm going to leave that apart for ingrid pitt is my my, my number four i was going to go heather langenkamp because i just think her performance in uh, nightmare part one three and new nightmare she's mm-hmm. so underrated as like a scream queen but she's got the likes of jamie lee to go against so it's really mm-hmm. hard to compete or mm-hmm. janet lee um or Janet Lee, yeah. yeah, but she's honest, especially in New Nightmare, playing herself while playing Nancy at the same time. That takes talent. She's really good. Mm. Um, but no, part number four is Ingrid Pitt. I won't go into it too much because I know you've not seen many. Uh, you've probably seen some of the films w- with her in it, like uh, Wicker Man and things. Um, yeah, she's the she's the librarian. Um, she was also in. I think she. I think she played a couple of roles in Doctor Who. Oh, I think yeah. she's in Where Eagles Dare with uh, fucking. It's who is it? It's Where Eagles Dare. Is that the one with uh, Clint Eastwood, Richard yeah, Burton? Yeah. Fucking. You mentioned that Doctor Who episode. I don't know if you've seen. I can't remember the name of the episode because it's so piss poor. You think you've you've got Ingrid Pitt. You've got one of the icons of horror and fucking Hammer in your Doctor Who episode. So what do you do with it? You sit her at a desk and make her wear this bright fucking <laughs> silver jumpsuit and just type. That's it. You've got Ingrid Pitt to sit there. Fucking get it to rip someone's you know, throat th- out. <laughs> no, that makes me think of it. It's, it's really quite clever. So we, we, we mentioned prior to starting hitting the record button for this episode, we talked about our love of South Park. Uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, if you are listening love you um anyway so it was the bit where we're talking (laughs) deep inside where um (laughs) (laughs) but big san franciscan join uh anyway so uh we talked about it so the guys from south park would have celebrity cameos but they would never play the part that you think they would play so i think george clooney plays (laughs) is it it's not cartman it's not Stan. I think it's a Stan, yeah. or is it? Um, it's his. It's his gay dog. Yeah. <laughs> so he doesn't do any voice either. That's it. So that's George Clooney. I think he goes rrr um, at one point. And that's it. Rrr, rrr. Yeah, and that's it. It's just he's, he's just a gay dog in it, and that's a very matter of fact in the episode. But yeah, that, I thought that was quite clever. And then like Jerry Seinfeld plays like Crazy Chicken number three. Does he? And it's like loads of people <laughs> are just going to end up being like really big episodes. 
Uh, they've cut we it. Have, oh, we've got the celebrity guests and that's it. They've got getting used in them that way. That's what I would want to do. Yeah. Go, no, no, you're not going to be playing a big part. <laughs> you're not going to ultimately <laughs> find out that you're the killer or you're the reason as to why that's happened. You know, you're, you're going to play <laughs> crazy chicken number three. I love they've got uh, Jennifer Aniston, who was at the time in Friends, which seems to be this very clear, clean cut, happy, jolly sort of clean sitcom. And she's the mm. uh, she's the tour guide or something with getting gay with kids. <laughs> like, <laughs> the Save the Rainforest Foundation. <laughs> it's fucking class. <laughs> and now that they, they air the episodes uncensored, it's quite cool to hear somebody like Jennifer Aniston say that she fucking hates the rainforest and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Brit. I still think my favourite episode they ever did was, was in Night of the Living Homeless. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's change. Change. He's become and one. And then he got the guy. It's the guy. Oh yeah, he's, he's the foreclosed in his house. I watched that at my friend Steve's house, and I near wet myself a little bit. Uh, that one. I think we watched that one in there. It was a Mr. Peepy's Wild Ride. Oh yeah. Where they say, like, "Oh, there's too much Peepy in the water park." And go on, and he started pissing on these capuchin monkeys. Oh my God, he's furious. Oh, uh, it's. I'm really curious. <laughs> Bana- bananas. <laughs> it's Stan's dad. He's the best character in anything. Ah, it's when he's ah, ah. Sure. and then he gives him oh, sure. he gives him the banana. And it's like I'm not mad anymore. <laughs> We've done it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's he's so fucking cool, Stan's dad. Have you played the games? I haven't. Is it oh. fractured butthole? Yeah, and uh, the stick of truth. He's the funniest thing in them. I don't want to ruin them if you've not played them. It's like playing an episode. I swear when the, the cinematic on the first one ended, I thought it was continuing because it's honestly just like playing an episode. It's, so I sat there for like five minutes. They like, what the fuck? They, oh, all right, it's me. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh. Because they do, they do that one. What's what's the... Was it the stick of truth? What's what's so funny about that one? The, the st- Why, what's the, the stick the stick of truth? Why is it so funny for the, for the title of it? Because fractured but whole... It's fractured oh, butthole. It's not that dirty. It's the stick of truth is literally. It's just like uh, the play on the sword of truth or something stupid. So the, it, it is actually okay. a stick. They're basically playing right. um, like Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings kind of mix. Where what they're looking for. And then for fractured is a, but whole is like more like a superhero one. Yeah, isn't yeah, yeah. It's really good though. It kind of continues on as well. So uh, fractured butthole is one day later, essentially as well. Right. Which is okay. Cool. cool. But yeah, no, um, but, uh, Ingrid Pitt. <laughs> Ingr- Ingr- no, Ingrid Pitt, no, coming back to what we were talking number about, number four. Ingrid Pitt. <clears throat> but yeah, um, uh, number four. Yeah, yeah. Uh, number four for me. Uh, I'm going to go with Adrian Barbo. Nice, nice. As it's obviously mentioned beforehand, uh, obviously worked very closely with uh, John Carpenter as the voice of the chess wizard from The Thing. Yeah. Uh, Escape from New York. She's done. Uh, she's done absolutely loads of stuff. And sort of, I always sort of see her as being like a, um, like a mark of kind of just being like, like it's something to, that was worth my while. Yeah. And she's got that amazing voice from the fog. She's kind of almost like the, the the narrator to a certain extent, and I think that's possibly true. I'm trying to remember as to whether it happened before or was made before or after the Warriors. Or what's the other one called? Vanishing Point. Yeah. I am. Uh, so did you do you know the movie Vanishing Point? I know of it. I've not seen it. So Vanishing Point came out, I can't remember the name of the actor that plays it, but he, he drives like a Ford Challenger or whatever, a sort of white iconic car of the time where he's got like flares, like sort of a billowy silk <laughs> shirt, big big chest fro hanging out, some sort of religious medallion, sunglasses, you know, driving as fast as he possibly can, you know, just cause, because. Um, I can't remember which one that did it first, so it might have been Vanishing Point or it might have been The Warriors where it's the whole idea that the, the DJ uh, provides the soundtrack, but also like the the narration of the sort of the guide throughout the course of the movie. Um, but yeah, I think it's done very very well with regards to your horror, mm. and she's just got this amazing voice. And once you hear it, you just go, "At Adrian Barbo." <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. Uh, but yeah, it's just absolutely phenomenal. And she's you... got this kind of iconic look. Yeah, uh, look. Sorry. Yeah, because her hair, it, even now, it, it's never changed. She's always got that very iconic look and style about her hair. It's very so, it's very big, almost Farrah Fawcett-y style, but different. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it works for her. That's not a criticism. I think she's insanely, she's a beautiful woman. Um, but have you ever seen, she did a film called uh, Tales of Halloween. I've not seen it. It is available on on Amazon if you want to watch it for free as well. It's like an anthology film, 
but she begins yeah. the the movie with a oh I made these <laughs> it's like the, she does the whole thing and it's so fucking cool like for that alone I'm in uh, she's also in Swamp Thing which yeah she's I was just having a quick flick through she has done like a a ridiculous amount of like geek stuff mm. she does the voice uh, in the voice of Arkham from the uh, Batman Arkham Asylum games oh really she was in Dexter's Grey's Anatomy uh, God of War yeah <laughs> uh, She's done like uh, like a bunch of stuff that she's done over the years. She's done superhero uh, animated stuff. Nice. She was in Argo, Hitman Absolution, like absolute ton of like sort of that's just, just a load of iconic stuff. Like um, I think she's also, yep, yeah, she's the voice of Central, which is the computer from the Judge Dredd movie nice. starring Sylvester Stallone. Nice. Um, but that's 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 a phenomenal thing that she's done. She's been in Babylon Five. Mm. She's done absolutely tons of stuff. But uh, she's obviously well known for for Escape from New York. She's in The Fog. She's in The Thing. Uh, obviously, she worked very closely with the likes of. She was in Cannibal Run. Oh yeah, of course she is. Oh, I've seen that for you. She, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to say something very controversial. I think I prefer Cannibal Run too. I don't, I've not seen it. I don't think I've seen part two. I'll, I'll check it out. Because I absolutely love... Uh, what's, what am I going to say is his name? He, I think he does the voice of the cat from American Tale. Hmm. Um, is he uh, a Mel part? Brooks regular? Um, like a, he might have been, you know, a, but a he was... Guy. He was Dom DeLuise. Dom DeLuise, yes. That's who I was thinking of. Just <laughs> absolutely phenomenal... Uh, as Victor uh, Prinzen in uh, the Cannibal Run movies yeah. and it's just so much fun and what I loved about what they did at the end of those movies is they kept the, they put the outtakes in because hmm. he comes out as like sort of uh, Captain something or other called? Yeah. Captain such as hello JJ and he's got the <laughs> they just completely <laughs> fuck up the lines and they're going to go back and do it but then you've got like the guy that played uh Jaws from the, the yeah. James Bond movies you've got like Jackie Chan yeah yeah, but Jackie Chan's clearly the one that's in charge. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's absolutely brilliant. Just loads and loads of fun. But uh, yeah, Adrian Barbo, absolutely phenomenal. A sign of uh, class and sort of, I, I would sort of, you immediately hear that voice. Yeah, she obviously does have an iconic look as well. But it's that voice. But she's done everything from Creep Show. I think she might have done, had a part in the new series as well, which oh, is meant to be really cool. good. I haven't watched any of the series. I absolutely love Creepshow one and two. Yeah, I think I've mentioned beforehand. I prefer Creepshow two. No, I do. I do mostly for the the raft uh, storyline. That's just it's horrible. Yeah. Uh, I think it's it's, it's just how unnatural that thing looks. Like it doesn't look like anything. It looks solid yet liquid yet slimy but firm and rigid and viscous. Yeah, viscous like, and moist and uh, uh, moist. Yeah. Oh, that 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 kind of jump scare at the end. Yeah. Is Fucking brilliant! It's good, yeah. Because you think, oh, oh they've you... got away. Oh no, you're fucked. <laughs> yeah. Sploosh. You can't get me on land. <laughs> and then fucking <laughs> fucked. Pulls out get a it. gun. Get back in. <laughs> get... Uh, in the words of Billy Ocean, get out of my river <laughs> into my mouth. I don't know. Uh, it's uh, it's so coming in. Aquaman's jizz. So uh, <laughs> come to a podcast and <laughs> ex- excre- 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 It's coming in Aquaman's. Come in the Aquaman's hook. <laughs> Did that man just say use the word jizz in a, a joke? <laughs> knock knock. Who's there? Jism. That's a, a, a Bill Hicks joke for anyone who doesn't know. <laughs> anyway, that, that's enough of that because that's a bit. Ugh. So number three. Number three, yes. Um, we're going to stick with, because obviously we're both very John Carpenter fans, and this is my last new one. But uh, when I was thinking about it, I, I was trying to think of, if this person's in a movie, and I know that they're in this movie, will I go and see it just off that knowledge alone? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. person I've chosen is PJ Soul. Now... Uh, yeah, sounds so familiar. Yeah, oh, you, you'll get you it. <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> Yeah, uh, she's uh, totally in Halloween. She's the cheerleader, head cheerleader. Um, right. She's also in Carrie, playing exactly the mm-hmm. same character, the, the cheerleader who who sort of sets off the, the Carrie taunting. She's like pointing at us, talking about how Carrie's 
uh, become a woman and stuff like that. Um, but she's also, very surprisingly, I only found out not long ago, in Devil's Rejects. Oh, amazing. Uh, yeah, Rob Zombie being a big fan of that sort of era of horror as well, especially Carpenter as well, though Carpenter himself <laughs> has expressed his feelings on <laughs> on uh, Rob Zombie. I quite like House of a Thousand Corpses. I think it's a great movie. Devil's Rejects is a really good sequel. I've not seen mm-hmm. a Three from Hell, but I've actually been put off it by a mutual friend of ours. Uh, mm-hmm. But she, if if you've seen Devil's Rejects, haven't you? Yes, I have. Yeah. I've seen House of a Thousand Corpses. I've seen Devil's Rejects. If not Three from Three from Hell, Three from yeah. Hell. I still haven't seen it yet. Nah, again, uh, our, our mutual friends put me off on that one, saying that it answers nothing. But I, I want to watch it because I, I kind of respect the trilogy, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, because uh, it, it, it goes in completely different. <laughs> yeah, it go, yeah. goes in a completely different direction. Mm. Um, but yeah, speaking of Sid Hagen, you said you watched it last night. It was a Galaxy of Terror. <laughs> yeah, I might pick. I might pick that one as as a review that we do. One Sweet. Week. Yeah, because because it's so. Despite and I'm I'm not being negative. Mm. Despite its its sort of trappings or, or sort of I don't want to use the word failings. Shortcomings, as it, it were. <laughs> short shortcomings. It's 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 idiosyncrasies. It's foibles. Um, I, I really really enjoyed it. I, I think I laughed and enjoyed myself. Oh, I laughed my whole the, the way through. <laughs> it. And yeah, but still, the means I enjoyed it. Oh, I would go back and watch it again. There's yeah. so many times you watch a film and you go like, uh, yeah. you know what? I'm not going to bother him again. And then I'm going, you know what? I'm going to go back and yeah. revisit that because it was just fun. I'm ashamed to admit that was the very first time I'd ever seen it because it's one of those things I'd, I'd known of. I didn't know who was in it. Robert England, Sid Haig, um, Joni from The Happiest of Days. Joni loves Chachi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're all in it and they're all great in their own right as well. But every time I'd seen the promotions for it and things it just looked like somebody trying to imitate a B-movie and I love B-movies and I love cheesy films it's not trying to imitate it it is one it's also phenomenal I, I loved every minute of it I was like I said I was I was wetting my pants I was trying to sew something because I, I was I'd, I'd done I, I've knackered my shoulder I won't get into it too Please. much and I wanted to sew something to kind of uh, help it heal um, uh-huh. so as I was doing that a certain scene happened where I was just sort of stunned staring at it as this this weird because it's practical effects obviously uh, on top of this unfortunate lady uh, I must have stabbed myself 40 times <laughs> with this this needle just trying to get her it's just the, like the, 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 the slug snail yeah <laughs> yeah I find that that was the that was the bit that made me go oh yeah that, that stepped it away from B movie and, and uh, <laughs> took it to video nasty territory slightly. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Channel five, Vaseline over the lens type thing. But yeah, no. Uh, to, to get back, PJ Souls. She's she's one of them. Like uh, she's not Annie. She's Linda in Halloween. Um, mm-hmm. So she's the one that says totally over and over again. Now I remember watching that movie Halloween as I do, and watching it with my partner, who said you can tell the dialogue was written by a man. Immediately afterwards, I put a documentary on because I, I, I'm that way inclined. And it, Deborah Hill come out because a lot of people forget that it was written by John Carpenter and Deborah Hill. And Deborah Hill, she deserves yeah. the equal credit, and John Carpenter will will argue tooth and nail to give her that half credit as well. She's gone yeah. now, sadly, but um, she said I wrote all the female dialogue, so I just sort of smugly took a sip of me <laughs> tea. <laughs> written by a man, was it? <laughs> Mm. Oh. What's that taste of victory? <laughs> the taste of your Victor- tears are so sweet to me. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, PJ Soul, she's just, she, for some reason, she's lovely. She's just really, really nice. It's hard because it, her performance, it, you can't even describe it. It's just like you imagine that's what she's like in real life. She's a very warm yeah. person, very loving, except maybe the, the taunting of Carrie. But she kind of really rips into Carrie a little bit. Um, <laughs> but she's also in uh, Rock and Roll High School, stuff like that. She always seems to play a cheerleader because mm. she just looks like the archetype cheerleader, to be honest with you. Now, there's a little right. she, there's a little thing as well. She plays the teacher in, or voices the teacher in Halloween 2018, which I thought was a really nice little nod, and you don't pick up on it. But now that I've said it, you'll you'll hear that. Immediately, I'm gonna have to. Re- I'm gonna yeah. have to rewatch it. That's that 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 sequel. Yeah, where it disregards all the other. Ones. I 
I love it. Not to gosh, it's fucking. So I good. I think it's brilliant. It's so well done. <laughs> Jamie Lee's phenomenal in it. Oh, she's um, such a good. Oh. She's, which brings which brings me to my one. Yeah. Be no surprise to you because we've done this before. <laughs> uh, Jamie Lee Curtis um, is phenomenal. I uh, see. So she is a scream queen. Despite, and this is not despite as in like her mother, despite the fact her mum was synonymous with psycho, mm-hmm. like how is she gonna then, you know, meet and then, <laughs> and, and, in my opinion, exceed her mother's role as being a scream queen? Yeah. I think she's kind of the one to which all scream queens or our final girls are compared to. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so she done Halloween, which came out in 78, is that right? Yeah. Oh, and then and it I need to make red? a correction. In an earlier episode, I talk about how Halloween was made on ten grand. That's not true. John Carpenter, a fucking liar. I know. Yeah, <laughs> John Carpenter was only paid ten grand for that. Um, right. Whereas Doctor Loomis, or uh, I forget his name. My God, how Donald Pleasant. Donald Pleasant was was paid like uh, I think it was close to eighty. Grand, <laughs> like he got a lot more than them. It was actually made on three hundred and fifty thousand, which is still incredibly low budget. Um, yeah, that, that is. You, you'd struggle to get anything made or produced yeah. or edited or anything else. Uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. And nowadays, well, I was watching that documentary because it was recent. I saw it. I, I, I'll let you. I promise. I'll, I'll shut up in a second. But I love Halloween. Um, John Carpenter apparently was so intimidated when Donald Pleasance came in because originally they wanted uh, Christopher Lee, which we've mentioned, who says that that was his biggest regret was turning that down. In my opinion, I'm kind of glad he did because that would have changed the tone entirely and I love Pleasance. But either way, he was so intimidated and uh, when Donald Pleasance, who only originally did it because his daughter was getting into music and he knew that John Mm -hmm. Carpenter after Assault and Precinct 13 was an up-and-coming doing really well with music type of uh, movie maker so during the scenes you, and there's, there's like deleted scenes and behind the scenes mm-hmm. footage of John Carpenter like kind of f- coming up to him a bit worried to give him direction and yeah and uh, he, he sort of plays off on it Donald Pleasant sort of like was being a bit snooty and things and apparently after it all he was just saying you know I was fucking with you right <laughs> and they, they became <laughs> they came like really close after that and uh, Donald mm-hmm. Pleasant actually wrote loads of for Halloween 2 he gave right. the script to John Carpenter and John Carpenter at that point was very comfortable with Donald and said no this is shit and threw it out <laughs> he didn't use a single word <laughs> of Donald Pleasance's uh, but he, he had that really dark sort of sense of humour where he could see Carpenter was really intimidated and just used it and like fucked with him for the entire shoot <laughs> and, then, and then just told him about it and then they obviously went off and made Prince of Darkness uh, Escape from New York and just were the best of friends but I think that, that's lovely <laughs> yeah. but I think Jamie Lee was in on it um, to get back to Jamie Lee a little bit because he, he told uh, Jamie as well like oh watch, watch this so John mm-hmm. well, how would you like me to, to perform uh, Dr. Lewis at this scene he give him direction he go Oh, I don't agree with that at all. And he just back off because <laughs> who's he <laughs> like compared to Donald Pleasant? <laughs> but then he'd do it John's way anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But sorry, that it, was I, I don't huge. know. If, I, I don't know if I'm wrong, but is 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 Donald Pleasant as it stands at the moment got the highest amount of horror movie credits to his name? Uh, I think yeah, because uh, you, you checked that last time, didn't you? Because we thought it was either him or Lee. With Dracula, I think so. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of other contenders that's in the list, like Tony Todd, Kane Hodder, Cushing, Lee, as well. uh, Cushing, yeah. Bill Mosley, uh, Lance Henriksen, uh, John Carradine. Oh God, yeah. <coughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah. There's there's a lot of sort of phenomenal people, but yeah, Jimmy Lee. Uh, surpassing, in my opinion, her mother's title of being yeah. a screen queen, and the one of which all ones are sort of compared to. Uh, and obviously, then she went on to do The Fog, and she kind of like sort of evolves throughout the course of it, and that kind of shows in the in the roles in which she plays. And she's one of these people that manages to walk this really fine tightrope of being able to do horror and serious acting, but also be phenomenal as a comedic actor as well. Yeah. Like she's brilliant in a fish called Wanda. She's so brilliant in True Lies. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Um, I think she's managed to sort of, uh, like, particularly in the latest one for 2018's Halloween, like, what would that character be like now? Mm-hmm. And she would be, she would be more grizzled, she would be fucked off, she would be angry. 
you would be to a certain extent. You would be reliant on yeah. uh, on alcohol to a certain extent and just sort of being like, I'm going to be super protective and have all this shit ready yeah. in case he comes back. Because you know what? He's not fucking dead. Yeah. He fucking should be. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. Like, Because he didn't just kill her friends. He, he essentially took stole 40 years of her life. Like, she yeah, was obsessed. Yeah, imagine. Like, yeah. And I think that's that. That's what's that answers the question which people would ask, which is, what would happen next? Mm-hmm. He gets he gets imprisoned again, and then what what would happen? He's just waiting for the opportune moment, and she's waiting for him to get out. Yeah. And what would then happen next? And it's it's answered so well, and I cannot wait for the two sequels, which I believe are being filmed back to back. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. I'm I'm going to go see that on opening day. I'm just going to go. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Same. I have to admit, I liked uh, I liked more all of the Halloween sequels. A poor, except yeah, for maybe too. Resurrection, yeah. maybe. <laughs> uh, that was a bit. Oh, where uh, Buster Rhymes kills uh, Michael Myers, K- kicks Michael in the, the bollocks. Oh, I won't get into it. <laughs> but no, uh, Halloween H two O, I thought was a good good sequel. It was really nice. The only th- my main criticism was the Jamie Lee's beautiful and amazing in it, but mm. I think the film itself undersells her a little bit. She plays so mm. it's twenty years on, so that was like the midway point now, which is insane to think. And it was, what if what happens next? She's sort of mm-hmm. gone in on herself. She's kind of curled up into a ball. In other words, her arc in the first one, and to a degree, second because that was still continuity in it, means nothing. She's just mm-hmm. curled up into a ball and is terrified for twenty years. Where in part, mm-hmm. the two thousand eighteen Halloween uh, twenty eighteen. I feels a bit more natural in her character, in my opinion. In as much as she, yes, she's terrified, and she's still Laurie. She's incredibly smart. She's incredibly resourceful. Yeah. Like, which what yeah. traits you, you see? You, yeah, you would you would have to. It's it's like not like a doomsday prepper, and it's like you get these people who are like not to be disparaging towards them. I kind of get it because the zombies are coming one day. Um, <laughs> But it's the whole idea that, you know, what would you do if this happened to you? Yeah. The most, the purest form of evil you've ever in- encountered. Yeah. What would you do knowing that they are still alive? You're going to prepare should they ever escape. And and maybe possibly part of you wants for that to happen so you can finally yeah. get closure and then move on with your life after 40 fucking years. I know. <laughs> she even hints to that a few times. Like she says to him that she prayed that he would escape and stuff. And there's a beautiful scene in it. And it's still not answered, and I hope they never do answer it. Where she's having like a drink in the car, watching him being mm-hmm. taken away in the bus. Mm-hmm. You don't see what happens next. She just turns up in the um, in the the restaurant. The, the, the restaurant for the girl, yeah, yeah. for the, the little girl's birthday. And the next thing you hear on the radio is that the bus has broke down. She's hung mm-hmm. over and hears it, but she's not surprised by it. So there's a lot of fan fan theory that uh, speculate that she's the one that caused the bus to crash. So you would escape. Um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily go with that one. I wouldn't go. In, with my, it. in my opinion, I just think anyway. it's, it's nice to to not answer it. But to be honest with you, I think if anyone did it, it was the doctor because <laughs> later on that is answered as well. <laughs> that that is such a great like. I'm going. Oh, this is just going to be like just loads of fanfare. Michael's going to go and kill a bunch of teens and stuff yeah. like that. Great in great style. It's going to be done with a, like a sort of an enhanced version or like a, like an upgraded version of mm. it. Is already iconic soundtrack. Um, but yeah, uh, I was thinking Daniel Davies. Yeah, I think it's the guy that does the soundtrack with him. He just went off to do his own stuff, which is really really good and very sort of not worshiping but following in the footsteps of what what um, John Carpenter does so well. Yeah, and continues to do so well. Um, but yeah, absolutely fantastic. Uh, Jimmy Lee is is brilliant. She she's up there. Yeah, screen queen. Absolutely, and which is why I've went on a little bit longer with it as well because she was my number one, you snake. Um, <laughs> so she, I am. <laughs> she was my, my my number one pick, which means I'm left with only my number two choice, uh, which hasn't changed. Which I do know was mentioned last time is Sigourney Weaver. Yes, that's that's also on my list because. Yeah. Um, She's so the good. weaver yeah. of the Sigourney, <laughs> the weaviest of them all. I've been going back through. Uh, for some reason, I go on an alien kick every so often, and yeah. it, it is. It's you know, they, I think the alien is one of the most iconic looks. H.R. Geiger's alien, the xenomorph uh, design is brilliant. The only extra design that I, I kind of love is the Queen Alien. The dog alien's fine. Predator alien is yeah, it's fine. But the Queen Alien design is beautiful, and on, especially in Aliens, because in Alien One, 
which we did mention in the episode that never was, mm -hmm. Sigourney Weaver, throughout the entirety of her screen appearance in Alien, she's correct. Everything she says and does is right. So in part one, she plays her part in the... Um, it's a mining ship. She, she yeah. doesn't want to break quarantine. Awesome. Where the rest of the crew seem to want to be like the British public and break quarantine <laughs> um, every second of every fucking day and just come in with a face hugger attached to it. Part two, her parallel to the Queen Alien is beautiful because her arc is that she never got to live her life with a daughter. So mm -hmm. she basically surrogates Newt. At the end, the face-off yeah. between her and the Queen as she takes out her brood, which is like the <laughs> equivalent... Oh man, Cameron, bravo. Like, really beautifully done. Oh. It's it's like how how do you follow up that movie? Like Alien is is phenomenal. Yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. Dripping in KY jelly, very <laughs> claustrophobic. And as we mentioned beforehand, and a good friend of mine, Callie, if you're listening, hi, <laughs> hi. Um, um, he he sort of explained to me it's like it's like a haunted house in space. Yeah, and sort of I never really thought of it that way. So it's really really clever that way. And the casting, absolutely brilliant. She is she is the one. She's the voice of reason. For yeah. all of the movies in which she's involved with Alien, uh, and if had people just listened to her, there would have been no issues. So Alien would have been don't break quarantine. Fuck John Hurt, he's staying outside. Yeah, he's no. got something. In, he's got something inside him, and we're not just talking about the, you know, <laughs> charisma and all that sort of stuff. But he's got he's, the alpha man got inside something. him. <laughs> he's got something deep inside him. Deep inside. Him. Uh, uh, it's hurting me. And then yeah. Uh, just turns out he's got this this fucking horrible steel toothed animal. Yeah, <laughs> uh, just, just just coming in fucking shit up with uh, yeah, do you uh, know, with uh, with John Hurt, right? That has now become a thing in in our household now. If we look at something too closely, we're John hurting it. So <laughs> it looks like some kind of egg or something. It opens. What does he do? Hmm. <laughs> Stuffs his face right into it. <laughs> <laughs> this has teeth, I think. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you're right though. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, uh, Scorny Weaver, absolutely phenomenal. But she's she's managed to kind of weave horror or like very much weave. She's embraced weave. She's weaved it oh, all. I, I didn't even mean that. But she's done like she's uh, Scorny Weaver franchise. <laughs> she's in fucking. Hell. Uh, she's a dream weaver. But she's even done other stuff as well. Like she's in Galaxy Quest, which is a phenomenal class film. Uh, like, like um send up of yeah. sci-fi movies yeah. um, but again I think she's kind of I think she plays op like the opposite of what her character would play Yeah. like in in, in Galaxy Quest where she's sort of um, she's a character in a TV show that just talks to the computer Yeah. she's like the dumb she's not she's of like and I'm not I'm doing this in quotation she's like the dumb blonde yeah. but obviously she's more than that in real life and obviously in every other movie she, it's just playing opposite her, her typecast yeah. which is normally like a very strong independent female who just doesn't take any shit <laughs> <laughs> she's good in um in Ghostbusters which I would class yeah. as a horror technically as well yeah as ghosts. it is it does it's got and I love how you see how they did the practical effects for that movie so so good but D D Dana Barrett where he just keeps on like pulling on his ears and, yeah uh, <laughs> oh. what's the what's the what's the bookshop called the bookshop in uh Ghostbusters 2 oh I can't remember actually it's been a while because I know she appears in in both of them uh, Weaver she doesn't does she cameo in the remake they did a while back I know most of the Ghostbusters do possibly yeah uh, Razor Cult Books is the name of it oh Tobin's Spirit Guide uh, and a bunch of other bits and pieces yeah but that's that's really kind of cool um, but yeah Dana Barrett <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um, I mean but Weaver again. We could do because I'd love to do the the Alien movies at some point as well. And it's mostly for the performance. Sadly, a lot of the cast of Alien, because um, the guy who, who's constantly worried about his um, his bonus or his pay, he just passed away not long ago as well, didn't he? Uh, Yafet Kotto. Yeah. So the, there's who's, only Weaver. And... He was in uh, Running Man. Yeah. Oh man. But no. But I, yeah. I... Oh, he's he's absolutely brilliant. I think he he does. He does so well as far as like he's done a lot of like um, stuff with cult followings. Mm. I think he's a, a villain in one of the James Bond movies. He's done absolutely loads of stuff. Yeah. Um, I thought he was in. I don't know whether he is. I could be wrong. Um, 
Yeah, but he's, he's just phenomenal in that. He's in Running Man, he's opposite in Alien, mm. uh, opposite Harry Dean Stanton, who's just absolutely fucking brilliant you as well. You know, uh, they get in, a, in Alien, they've got one of the best back and forth, uh, him and Weaver, and it's, do you know where he's, he's playing, um, he's got the gas coming out to really mm-hmm. piss her off, so they're talking about the bonus situation, and he's obviously playing with yeah. her. And at one point he's like, no, we're not going to do any more work until we talk about the bonus situation. You'll get where it's coming to you, or whatever she says. He says, yeah, but I want to talk about it now. And the way she says this, for some reason, it's just like, oh, hello. So going to be it just goes, why don't you just fuck off? <laughs> it's like, hello, madam. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit like, get away from her, you bitch. Semi. <laughs> Semi every time. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah. But absolutely, yeah. Sigourney Weaver is absolutely phenomenal. Do you know the um, last last little thing? I'm sorry, I keep interrupting. I'm so bad. Why? Well, um, it's all right. The last time I watched Aliens, I was sat there with my partner, and she, she absolutely loves them as well. They're good movies. And I was a little drunk, and I was in tears, like laughing at my own shenanigans here. At the bit where they just get off, they've escaped from the Queen, then all of a sudden Bishop starts spewing his milk out of his mouth, and the um, the Queen Aliens tail comes through his chest. I nudged, I nudged my partner. It goes, "Oh look, Queen takes Bishop." I was, I was gone. I was in tears. <laughs> Chest joke. Oh, fuck me. Bravo. <laughs> I, I enjoyed that. That was good. Uh, it's not quite as good as my funeral joke <laughs> the last time we recorded this. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that in a minute. Uh, <laughs> oh, will we? Oh shit! It's fucking oh yeah, we will. We'll, 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 you know, we'll, we'll try and recapture that magic. Um, I think my last one of all the ones I've covered. So we've covered Adrian Barbeau, Elsa Lanchester, Jimmy Lee Curtis, Sigourney Weaver. Yeah. The last one, possibly the one that left the biggest impact for me, as far as being fucking terrified, is Jean Marsh. Mm. So Jean Marsh uh, was uh, the wife of George C. Scott in Changeling, which is a phenomenal film. And as we mentioned the last time we recorded this. It, it kind of gets lost out on, which is unfortunate because it's a Canadian horror film. Hmm. But it came out the same year as The Shining. <laughs> yeah, how can? <laughs> which you is like, oh, I go, oh, all right. Uh, well, we're going to release a horror film. When are you going to release it? Oh, oh, oh my God. Uh, uh, we'll release it in 1980. What also comes out in 1980? The Shining. Oh gosh, darn. Oh, we'll, oh, we'll smash that just... piece of shit. Nobody's going to watch that. But, <laughs> time will only time will tell whether it will beat The Shining. Oh, <laughs> the fuck, it's The Shining. Shit. Um, <laughs> ah, it's one of the best movies ever made. Shit. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um, but yeah, she's brilliant in that. Uh, she's like the, the late wife of George C. Scott in it. She's really, really sort of quite um, haunting in that movie. Uh, she's also Bav Morda, uh, a.k.a. Bad Mother in uh, Willow. Mm. She's terrifying in that, but she's kind of like this fucked up queen nun woman trying to kill this kid. You know, because... <laughs> As you do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but she's brilliant in that. She's just very, it's very much like teeth and sort of like, exp- like you know, hiding her lips as she's doing that. She's almost sort of very monstrous in it. Yeah. And I can kind of understand as to why that's the case, but she's absolutely brilliant. She's terrifying in Willow. She scared the shit out of me as a kid, which is why, she, not that the reason or in order, but she's the one that's had a lasting impact on me. Mm-hmm. Um, she was also um, the, the evil witch in Return to Oz. Like the one where like the, the flow in gold, where like she changes her head and stuff like that, and she's going, ah, oh, she's asleep, she's asleep. Don't, ah, Dorothy, don't, don't, no, 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 don't, don't, raise a bolt, don't fuck with her. Ah, oh, no, she's coming after you. <laughs> fuck, fuck. Um, but yeah, she's absolutely brilliant in that, and she was also, and I mentioned the last time we recorded this, she was married to uh, John Pertwee. Yes, yeah, you were saying that's class. <laughs> for five, for five years until uh, then, she wasn't. <laughs> I mean, he was shooting well above his, his own weight, <laughs> to be fair. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Fucking Wurzel um, damage. Like. <laughs> she was in uh, Hitchcock's Frenzy. Uh, she was in Willow, Return mm. to Oz. Uh, she's done loads and loads of stuff. Uh, and she's still she's still kicking about. Mm. Um, but I was, thought her as being terrifying. She's got this sort of stillness with this sort of glint in her eye. Yeah. And it scares the shit out of me. So very, very dominating, like... In an authoritarian, author- oh god, I can't even authoritarian sort of way, not like anything kinky or weird. She she w- she could silence you with a raise of an eyebrow, basically because you're terrified she's gonna break your legs. <laughs> she, she reminds me of a, a, a maths teacher I had. Um, <laughs> she does. She terrified me. It was just a look. Uh, oh, all right, okay, I will do that. 
I'll be here. I'll be good. I'll be good. Please, please don't, don't please, please don't kill me. <laughs> I, I like, like being alive. I, I like playing Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Please don't. Play. <laughs> <laughs> I legitimately had a, a maths teacher called Mr. Addison or Mr. Addition. I'm, I'm not even joking here. That, that no word of a maths teacher. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Addison. Christ. God, I, I used to be a little shit at school. Though I, I, there was uh, where a substitute. I teacher, can imagine. Yeah, who who didn't last very long because her name was Miss Stalker. So I'd on purpose get her name wrong. I would call her Miss Peeping Tom. I miss following you in the bushes and stuff like. That. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm quite a I was I was I was not a shit in school, uh, but I was like a little bit sort of not cheeky. I would try and get away with certain things, or I would be silly with the people that were sitting next to me, and sort of they would be kind of laughing in hysterics when they weren't supposed to be because they were doing you know <laughs> equations and shit. Uh, anyway, so one of the times I was uh, what the fucking about what was it? What were we talking about beforehand? I've had some sort of like memory lapse oh, so we don't got what the teacher's name about? wrong or something <laughs> oh so we had a teacher the same surname as me oh uh, M- mrs alexander so going oh uh mrs mom and then <laughs> i would just sort of kind of run with it and going uh mom uh i forgot my pack lunch so if i could get a few quid off you uh, i could get some from the canteen i'm not your mother uh and they're going sorry about that mom sorry i uh, miss <laughs> <laughs> no i was a, 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 a <laughs> she, but, but she, she was like a, she was like a, she was a, a substitute teacher, and I don't think she came back for a little while. I don't think it was solely because of me. Yeah. It was other people that go, ah, oh, Mister Mister such and such has left his cat in the storage room. <laughs> All that sort of stuff going on. But yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I got in a bit of trouble for that one. Oh. <laughs> we we legitimately had a, a Mister Bait that didn't last very long for obvious reasons. Mm. I, I didn't even go there. I, I kept calling him Norman because I'm that way inclined. To where everyone else kept calling him Master. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, but he, he did. He did, which is funny because he did have a Masters. <laughs> he, might, he might. Yeah, he might. Have. He's got a Masters, Bates. Uh, Bates has got a Masters. Oh no. Uh, so that's that's my top five. There was an overlap with obviously uh, Sigourney Weaver. Obviously, we mentioned Jamie Lee Curtis as well, which I imagine would have been on your lift had I not taken them because I'm a fucking snake. Because you're a sn- uh, snake a snake. But yeah, yeah, and I think sort of, I think the reason why we did two separate lists is because I think it would be a loss to both sides is to just doing a top five actors yeah. and horror, um, so just doing male and female as to so you know because that would be very difficult to narrow it down to a top five. I think yeah. it'd be better to do one of each, um, and I think sort of. Arguably, I don't know whether you agree. I think sort of the, f- the female aspect of horror films is 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 more iconic for me because yeah. they're normally seen as being the victim, but also then they're also seen as being the hero. The final girl is a trope. Yeah, the final girl reason. trope, which yeah. which is which is really really good idea. Um, I legit. The, if I had to make a top five all time, I guarantee um, JB Lee and Sigourney Weaver would take silver and gold medal, regardless yeah. of of anything. I think because there's, there's that that deep understanding, and you kind of that, that you know that there seems to be like um, a rationale reason. It's not just reactive. There's a thought process behind it. There's there's, there's the sense the sense behind as to what they've done yeah. and why the final final girl generally <coughs> succeeds and and takes out the villain. Um, and obviously, there's loads of different allegories, and there's the reasons as to why that should be the case. But yeah, it's 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 yeah. It's just- Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, horror's just a lot of fun. You should all all enjoy it. And subscribe and listen to our show going forward. And even check out the Instagram page. At podcast in the back seat. I repeat, podcast <laughs> in the back seat. We're gonna keep just hitting you with it. Like what we're called uh, subliminal messages. Spoke. Smoke. <laughs> you smoke. You smoking yet? <laughs> Are you smoking? You smoking yet? Smoking. Go on, smoking. Smoke them up, Johnny. <laughs> God. So the bet, the bet I wanted to try and mention beforehand, because we, we talked about your your father used to run a bookshop in which you used oh, to yeah. buy in. Please regale me with the story oh. about this gentleman who had recently lost his, his dearly departed mother. Yeah, what I can't. Happened, I can't Mr. Hutton. I can't even remember why we came. Like, because we got off on so many bloody tangents that this came up <laughs> do, the, the, the last episode somehow. 
And we obviously this is now recorded a little bit out of order, as we've said before. So we mentioned it in the episode that you'll hear after this one. Uh, so I'm speaking to you from the future because we're also sci-fi bastards. No, the the actual story I have to. It's your kids, Matty. You've got to kill your kids. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen? The- no, I won't get into that as well. Um, but yeah, the the story itself was the, we had a, a couple of guys would always come in. Their name were Jim and Joe, and. Uh, I, I've mentioned before I do uh, an impression of Jim quite well, but I also because we we did little animations, um, which I'll send you actually if you want, um, where I do an impression of Joe, and we used to call him Joe Tramp because he used to smell like shit. He used to walk around with like netto bags all the time, and he just he he, he boxed and was actually uh, had the same trainer as my dad, but he also had a broken right. nose and couldn't smell and couldn't breathe. So he legitimately walked around like <sighs> all the time. It was kind of like oh awful, so he came back one day in and th- that setup was relevant by the way, because he came in in a full suit, so we're like oh Joe what what what's happened? Uh, my mother died. <laughs> all right. I'm sorry, just, I, I, yeah. I'm laughing already. <laughs> <laughs> my me mother died. It was like right, oh, oh, no, that's that's cause for a suit, <laughs> is it? Like I've just come come back from a funeral. All right, okay. And this this guy used to always tell like jokes, so we thought, is he taking the piss or something? But he was absolutely serious. He went, yeah, we're buried there. And he's got like a tear in his eye, like we're buried there to a favourite song. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. Uh, what's our favourite song? <laughs> <laughs> she, she liked the birdie song. <laughs> the birdie song. <laughs> <laughs> well, that just went through our heads over and over again. All we could see was him stood there with his trampy family, probably <laughs> in suits, luring, luring his I'm mother. <laughs> and may the Lord and may the Lord bless her and keep her. <laughs> Please bow your heads in silence <laughs> as we go to the corpse. <laughs> <laughs> she was a loving mother. Because normally, <laughs> normally the ones you would kind of go with is normally like uh, was it Lisa Gerrard's uh, "Time to Say Goodbye" with Andrea Pacelli. We'll <laughs> meet again. Uh, Je ne regrette rien by Edith Piaf. Uh, I'm going deeper underground by Jamiroquai. Yeah. <laughs> uh, always look on the bright side of life. I think that's what it was. I think we went from Monty Python. That was the birdie song, yeah. uh, and I think my my rebuttal and my little comment. I said, "Go and imagine everybody with their heads bowed, and, you know, in a in a period of mourning, and I hears the birdie song going on, and everybody's got that muscle memory. You got everybody's trying to tuck their fucking arms in, and then everybody's just trying to just fight the urge to flap their arms. What's this, ladies? This ladies in a fucking pine box, right? It's just." Whatever you do, don't flap your arms. Don't flap. Ah, everybody's just going. <laughs> with some little kitty that's contract his fucking. Da, 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 da. <laughs> it just it. It's the idea that imagine imagine this guy was Superman and he's he's wailing he's he's wailing on Batman <laughs> and instead of the Martha line, all they hear in the background as they smash into a radio shop is. Da, 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 and both Batman and <laughs> Superman <laughs> break down. Why did you play that song? <laughs> <laughs> Oh fuck! I can't. I can't even. But it's just. Oh. I, I, you know what? I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to hold it. I'd, I'd have to. I think I'd wet myself. We left the you room. What? We couldn't handle it. Like we left the <laughs> shop unattended with this, this suit, suit clad tramp with tears. <laughs> tears he wasn't of a really clown. a tramp. <laughs> Fucking oh man, the birdie song. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of a it. more inappropriate song. I, I think when I die, I want um, "Ding Dong the Witch Is Dead" to play. Uh, <laughs> I'm the god of Lord Hellfire, and I bring you fire, just as a cremation <laughs> body. <laughs> or, uh, or maybe uh, Lonely Islands, jizz in my pants. Just, <laughs> <laughs> I just ate a grape. <laughs> uh, uh, what if it, when uh, was it? Was it Bruce Willis was the ghost in the, uh, <laughs> At the end of Six Sense? <laughs> uh, it was a horror film. Oh, okay. um, but yeah, just it's just I try to think of anything that was more inappropriate. 
Uh, uh, was it, <laughs> now uh, you're a man by DVD here. <laughs> <laughs> what makes my <laughs> Oh, God. No, it's probably the two. <laughs> I fucking love that. Uh, but yeah, no, yeah, that was that, it. That, that's that was the... it. Sort of getting, if anybody can think of any other inappropriate songs that be played, I would played, love funeral, to hear them <laughs> at, a, at, a fu- at a funeral. <laughs> oh, do you know what it makes me think of? It's Baron's <laughs> nightclub in uh, Briefs and Mortimer. You go and uh, I'd like to get uh, some time off next year. <laughs> Why is it for your fat mother? I've got to go. I've got to. I've got to. I need some time off next year for to, for to go to your funeral. Is it for your fat mother? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, as you said, uh, if I keep going this way, she's down next day. She'll be dead. <laughs> the, <laughs> the more I think about the birdie song we are playing, like because, oh. <laughs> Uh, there's uh, nothing uh, more inappropriate. For the funeral? For You think there's something wrong with a man wearing a bra? <laughs> you think <laughs> I've got a note? <laughs> well, I'll, well, I'll be taking me paper. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. The fucking birdie song, though. It's just, it, it's oh, a virtue. She's oh. a loving mother. She's leaving back <laughs> a beautiful, a beautiful family. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, loving son. Uh, and a, and a doping grandchildren. Uh, <laughs> Imagine going, uh, our son and uh, his loving children, her grandchildren. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> Some somebody procreated with that. I mean more. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> oh fuck it! Uh, maybe a uh, surfing bird would be worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like the, the coffin was going up, up and down at that point, though, just like <laughs> like a joke. Oh. Or maybe oh, the, the, the Benny Hill scene. Suffered some sort of <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we uh, we commit this man's body to rest, and he he said uh, so he like he's requested to be played at his funeral. Uh, Ernie, and he drove the fastest milk cart in the West. <laughs> <laughs> Ernie. <laughs> oh God. So yeah, that that's the 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 birdie song tale. <laughs> um, Oh, you know what? I think oh, my face hurts. My ab hurts. <laughs> I've had a stomach pounder and a coke. <laughs> Fuck it. I think I think that's where we'll leave you today. Laughing, <laughs> a lady dying, to a, a song which apparently I've looked into. We're allowed to play because it's nice. part of uh, public domain. <laughs> I, I so might let it play in the background <laughs> through that entire segment. Then, <laughs> oh, no. oh no, God! But yeah, uh, Owen, thank you very much for listening. Yes, Do tune thank in you very next much. time. Uh, I believe the next episode was a review of Lost Boys. Yes, the Lost Boys. Very exciting. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, well, yeah, I think we're gonna have to put a laughter track in because we talk about people. Just in the right goings in a very peculiar way in Santa Carla. <laughs> Tune in next time is to find out as to why that's the case. <laughs> why anybody would move to Santa Carla, the burger capital it's of the world. A, it's a mystery. You're going to have to attend many funerals there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Imagine going, fuck, I think this, 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 this funeral hmm? suit is it's just getting greyer and greyer by the uh, week. And you're going, fucking. Come like to podcast in the dip. back seat where you'll seat. find out why funerals are hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck anyway, uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Good night, whatever <laughs> and good it is. Night. Uh, yeah. And good night. <laughs> Enjoy your stomach pounder and coke. I've been your host, Wayne Alexander, with your co-host. Matthew A. Hutton the fourth, a square. <laughs> I'm adding more. KGB. <laughs> <laughs> PhD <laughs> Mrs. <laughs> On that bombshell Play a sight Mr. Hutton Play a sight Play me out John <laughs>